Good morning. We welcome you in Jesus' name as we continue to in our ministry of worship here at St. John as we gather here today to hear God's word and to rejoice in what he has done for us. We're glad that you're here uh, with us worshiping today. We are a Christian community called to worship and sent to serve, welcoming all to walk with Christ and to grow in faith. And how important all of that is to our life here at St. John. But one of the most important things is that we welcome each other, that we care for each other, that we are here for each other. And one way that we can do that this morning is actually let's stand and greet each other this morning. Let us begin our time of worship. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known, to his, salva made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all, all the earth. Break forth in joyous song and sing praises. You may be seated as we join in singing our opening hymn.
invite you to stand as we continue with our confession and absolution. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of silent reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are always faithful. As we await your promised return, help us to recognize your gifts in this life so that we may serve you in confidence and quietness. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our scripture readings. The Old Testament reading for today is taken from the book of Malachi. Uh, this is the final book of the Old Testament, where we read from Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day of the Lord is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day is coming. The day is coming shall set the day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root 
nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I commanded, uh, commanded him at Horeb for Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. <clears throat> Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happen, as happened among you and that you may and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men for not all have faith but the lord is faithful he will establish you and guard you against the evil one and and we have confidence in the lord about you that you are doing and will do the things that we command may the lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Now we command you, brothers, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who, walk, who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you receive from us. For you, are, are, for you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us because we are not idle when we were with you. Nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day that we might, be a, that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this commandment. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's rise for the Holy Gospel. Our Gospel reading for today is from Luke chapter 21. While some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilence, and there will be terrors and great signs from the heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. 
Settle it, therefore, in your minds, not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are the days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and of the waves. People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's message. Morning, children. Have you guys ever been afraid of something? Have you ever been afraid of something? What well, maybe some things you might be afraid of? Big, big dogs, okay. <laughs> like giant ones. Yep, yep. I'm kind of afraid of big dogs too. So, what else? What other thing? How about how about when it uh, when there's a, like a thunderstorm? Does that ever kind of scare you sometimes? Let's think about that for a second. In a thunderstorm, what, what, what do you guys do if that kind of scares you? What might be something you might do? Gotcha. So you kind of make, uh, you talk about some things that might be going on with it, like the angels are bowling and it's making a lot of noise. You know what? I grew up with that same thing too, so I had to think about that as well. Yep, exactly. What other things might you do if there's a storm? Go under your blanket. Yep, that's a great thing to do when there's a storm out there. So, or, you know, snuggle up with some, like a stuffed animal you might have or something like that. How about maybe go to your parents? Anybody kind of do that? Want to spend time with your parents because of what the storm is going on? Yeah, those are all good things to do when there are bad things that are going on or things that kind of scare us. In the gospel lesson today, Jesus talked about some pretty scary things. He talked about some bad things that might happen in the world or actually will happen in the world. But at the end, he said, even though those happen, know that I am always there for you because he said your redemption is drawing near, which basically means that Jesus is always there for us. So sometimes when we're scared, if we can't go to our parents or cuddle under our blanket or think about other things, we can pray to Jesus. And he is always there for us, no matter what bad things might happen to us. And ultimately, we get to go to eternal life with him. So no matter what bad things we might face, 
he is always there for us. So let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you are always there for us, that you take care of us even in times that are difficult, even in times when we are scared. Help us, Lord, to find our source of strength in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, here's uh, all the bulletin you guys have for this morning. As you guys go back to your seats, we're going to join and sing our next song together. <laughs> words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts gathered here today be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today I want to focus in on that Luke passage and actually these next couple Sundays before we head into Advent, typically in the church year is where we focus on the end times. We focus on looking and seeing where all of history is headed and focusing in on the last days. And that's what Jesus is doing here in Luke. But I want to begin with this uh, picture here. Now, this is kind of strange, kind of probably a coincidence of some sort, but maybe how God is working in that. But, but this is a picture of the Titanic that I just finished in Legos. So that was one thing. So, but it just happened to be, and as I was uh, searching for some ideas about the sermon, this uh, um, pastor talked about this painting that's in St. Louis in the art museum, and this is a picture of the sinking of the Titanic. So, if you look in the back there, very, very back, you can kind of see the Titanic there. But what you see mainly on the screen here is the people in the lifeboats. Now, this doesn't do it justice. This is like a whole wall in the museum. 
And it's one of those things that just kind of captures your attention. And it's, it, in some ways, it's, it's kind of horrifying to see this and to think about this. The people that are dealing with this tragedy of the sinking of the Titanic. But as the, the story goes, and I don't know if it was an actual story or not, but it, it, there was parents there with their young child. And as they were looking at this, the, the parents were a little bit concerned with the child, wondering what he's thinking about all of the stuff that's going on in this picture. And so, so they, asked, they asked him, what do you think of this picture here? You know, waiting for an answer where he'd be talking about some of the scary things that are there. And the little child said, hmm, you know, it's a really pretty blue. A really pretty blue. And the parents are like, what? But I think that is a perspective sometimes that we need in the midst of difficult situations that we face. In fact, I think that's what Jesus is actually doing here in Luke as he is talking about the end times. Now, he's preparing his disciples. He's being realistic with what's going to happen and that it's not necessarily a pretty picture. But Jesus doesn't leave them just with the ugliness of what's going to happen. He also gives them hope. But again, listen to these words from Jesus. He says, as for what you see here, and he's pointing to the temple there, he says, there a time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. I mean, the temple, this, this beautiful piece of architecture, this beautiful center point in Jerusalem in which the people would come and worship. And, and in the story in Luke here, the disciples are marveling at this because this isn't something that they could see every day. They, they come from a smaller town up north, and so coming to see the temple was a very special thing for them. And then Jesus says, the time is coming when this will all be destroyed? They're not exactly easy words to hear. Jesus also says, watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. So now he's talking about maybe some kind of confusing things that might happen. There are people that will claim to be like Jesus, and he says, don't follow them. Again, very difficult words that Jesus is proclaiming. Or he also says, and there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress of nations and perplexity, people fainting with fear and foreboding for what is coming on the world. Jesus even talked about the wars and rumors of wars and all this difficult stuff that he's talking about. Talk about being timely as well. I mean, all you do is turn on the news and you hear the same thing again. And we know that because of sin in this world, we face this over and over and over again. But again, Jesus is not going to leave us there in that disaster. He has to be realistic about it. He has to tell the disciples what's going to happen and the difficulty that they're going to face and the difficulty the church will continue to face all throughout history because of the brokenness of this world and sin. And as we near closer and closer to the end, he's just saying more and more of this is going to come and to face these things. I'd like to put some different pictures up here for you that might help us think about in the midst of the struggle that we face in this life, in the midst of difficulty we face in this life, God is always there for us. This is one of my uh, favorite ones of all time. This is this is a picture here of Jesus calming the storm. And again, the, you don't have the opportunity to maybe get too close to that to see it, but what I like about this picture is that the people that are in the boat are not the disciples. In fact, they're wearing modern-day clothes. And the artist that drew this was representing that in the storms of life that we face, not just the storm the disciples face or the things that they face and the things that we face now. Jesus is there in the midst of that storm to calm that storm for us, but also just to be there with us in the midst of that storm. But another one that's become more of a favorite of mine, and this one, you, you kind of have to look real closely at this. 
And you have to stop for a minute and kind of think about the perspective of this picture. And it, it seems kind of interesting. You see this hand reaching out to you, and you see this man there, and it, and it looks like, you know, something's going on there. But what it is, is it's the perspective of Peter under the water. Remember the story where Peter comes out and walks on the water, and then he's afraid, and then he starts sinking in the water, and Jesus comes and picks him up? That's the picture from the perspective of Peter. Looking up and Jesus reaching down to him in the midst of the difficulty that he's facing, in the midst of, you know, the drowning that is going to happen here if Jesus doesn't save him. And Jesus just standing there on the water. In the midst of all that turmoil and chaos, Jesus is picking Peter up. These two pictures, I think, illustrate what Jesus is doing here in Luke. He's talking about the difficulty that they're going to face, and the disciples actually are starting to see that and starting to know that. I mean, this is at the time in which Jesus is coming into Jerusalem only days before he is going to be crucified. They feel the conflict that's going on. That the many people that are against Jesus, especially the religious leaders and even the Romans. And he knows that things are stirred up. They know that things are stirred up in Jerusalem. And they feel that difficulty. And yet, they kind of want to put it aside. And they're, look at the beautiful temple, Jesus. But Jesus is real with them. He says, you're going to face these difficult things just as he's going to face them as well. Because of sin in this world, there are hard things that you will face. But I am there with you. Just like that little child looking at that picture, he noticed the blue. That even in the midst of all the destruction that's going on there, there's still beauty. God, in the midst of all the difficult things we're facing, comes to us and says, I am always with you. This is how he reminds the disciples and you and me about this. A little bit later on in, in Luke 21, he says, Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Now, we see that and say, okay, yes. But stop and think about that for a moment. And When you're in the middle of all these difficult things, all you want is them to get all better and to go away, and you're thinking about how to get out of that. And here Jesus is saying, when you're in them, that's okay because it's a sign for you that your redemption is drawing near. You're thinking, well, why can't he just save us now? Well, redemption means that something's wrong already going on. And he's reminding us that because of sin in this world, something's wrong in our lives. And when we see the, what is wrong in our lives and see it for what it is, not just being human or just a mistake, but it is sin that is destroying us, then it, we realize all the more we need redemption. And Jesus says, redemption is coming and has come in his name. Your redemption is drawing near. So in the midst of the struggle we face, we recognize that something greater is at hand. Something greater is coming. And so in the midst of these struggles, we can focus in on Jesus. You see, when we see Jesus on the cross, that's the struggle again. And the wars and rumors of wars, the sin, the destruction that sin does, and the wages of sin is death. But Jesus takes all of that for us. It's in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the war, in the midst of the things that are there that Jesus says we'll be always there because of sin. But he takes that on for us. But through that, through that storm, that destruction, that awfulness, the, the end of days, Jesus is there reaching out to us. He went to the cross because he loves and cares for us. He died on the cross so that we could have redemption and so that in the middle of all the things that we face, Jesus says, I am with you. Your redemption is drawing near. Jesus loves and cares for us. And so it is important for us to think about and to recognize that 
we are nearing the end of days, always have been since Jesus' death and resurrection, that we are in the end of days, but yet all of that struggle that is there, reality of sin, will come to an end because of what Jesus has done for us. And so we are reminded again, in the midst of the difficult things that we face in this world, the awfulness of wars and violence, the divisions in families, the divisions in people, the struggles that we face in this world and all the things that seem overwhelming to us and seem to just drive us crazy. In the midst of all of that, Jesus says, I have forgiven you. Your redemption is drawing near. And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress and nations in perplexity. People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Amen. We continue now with the gathering of the offering. I invite you to stand as we join in singing together our offertory. O Lord, in these last days, we lift our eyes to your Son, Jesus Christ, from whom our help comes. Turn us from distress and fear of what is coming on our world to stand confidently in the word of Christ, which will never pass away. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, uphold all ministers of your gospel and those who hear it gladly, especially all persecuted Christians. Cause that the word to be honored and so delivered Deliver them from wicked and evil men. Give a mouth and wisdom to your people in all adversity to confess you boldly and to endure faithfully to the end. Lord, in your mercy. 
We worship you, O Lord, for all the loving kindness shown to us in Christ our Savior. Deliver us from fear as we witness the signs of the times and make sober judgments in the face of so many vexing concerns. Remind us that though the nations rage and the powers press against the church, this is our opportunity to give witness to the word that does not change and the mercy that is our hope in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we have this command from your blessed apostles that we are to be busy at work and not walk in idleness. Strengthen us in the Lord Jesus Christ to do good without weariness. Bless the homes and businesses of this congregation and give to our people the fruit of their labors. Grant that in the conduct of our life's work, our hearts may always be directed to the love of God and the steadfastness of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, straighten and raise the heads of your people to look for the resurrection at the last day and to live and endure in hope since our redemption draws near. Sustain your children in every affliction. Especially, Lord, we continue to pray for Jennifer and Karen, for Barbara and Ruth, for John and Wayne, for Bill and Estella, for Dennis and Roxanne, for Mark and Joanne and Kim, for April and Sue and Jeff, for Janet and Matthew and Joyce, for Profe Maria, for Sharon, for Jessica, and for Gail. Lord, in your mercy. As the days pass and all things move to their appointed end, keep us from being complacent. Keep us alert and awake so that when the day comes, we may greet the Lord and rejoice in his eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. Again, we're glad that you are worshiping with us or if you're joining us online as well. Worship is a central part of the ministry here at St. John, and so we continue with that ministry on Sundays and on Wednesdays. Also, if you have prayer requests, other concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Every Friday, we send out an email newsletter, so if you want to be a part of that, uh, you can sign up online or contact the church office, uh, but multiple ways to be connected uh, with us. Thank you also for the gifts that you have given and, and continue to give. God truly blesses each and every one of us, and part of our walk as disciples of, of Jesus is that we use those resources to further God's kingdom, so we thank you for those gifts. Also, it is time to do some picture taking. We uh, looked at our picture board that we did, and that was about four years, five years ago, and so it definitely needs some updating with that. So back in our lunchroom area, just inside the door there, we're going to be taking pictures over the next couple Sundays. So if you have your family together, uh, come and get your picture taken. The other piece is that we do have a um, directory and, and some of the information in the directory. Uh, we need to update that, so sometimes things have changed, emails have changed or whatever. Uh, take a look at that, and if you need to update any information, please do that. But over the next couple of uh, weeks, we're going to be uh, doing it, because our goal is hopefully in January to um, print up a um, pictorial directory for everybody here at church. Coming up this next Saturday is uh, the vendor and craft fair that our PTL is putting on here at St. John, and so we're looking forward to that. It's going to be a big event. Uh, we have many uh, vendors that are going to be a part of that, and so we're excited about that. Also then, coming up on November 23rd, that Wednesday, that evening, will be our Thanksgiving Eve service. And so we look forward to that, a time of worship uh, before we en enter into that Thanksgiving holiday but a great opportunity to gather together and to worship and give thanks to God for all that he has done for us. And then with Thanksgiving over, we dive right into Advent. It's hard to believe that we are so close to that already. And that Advent will be that first Sunday after 
um, our Thanksgiving. And so this year, uh, the theme is uh, Flames for the Faithful, and we're going to focus on the four candles in the Advent wreath, the Prophecy, Bethlehem, Shepherds, and Angel candles. And so we're going to look at the different themes that are uh, with those as we prepare for our uh, Christmas celebration. Today is our quarterly uh, voters meeting, so right after this we'll have a little bit of time because we're a little bit uh, done early here with worship service, but we're going to meet right back here in the sanctuary, so give us a few moments to kind of get set up, but you can enjoy the goodies that are out there for a while, and then come, please come back uh, for our quarterly voters meeting. Any other announcements from anybody this morning? Yes, Doreen. After the voters meeting, we will have a quick lighting ritual. Okay. Ah, I got you. Yeah, script orders, which are the, the gift cards that if, when you order them through this uh, program, it gives uh, some money back uh, to the school. That is due, what did you say, this Thursday? Tuesday. Tuesday, this Tuesday. So if you would like to do that, uh, please take the opportunity to do that so that you have those for great Christmas gifts with that. So, and then choir right after our uh, voters meeting. Any other announcements? Mike? Thank you. Yes, poinsettia orders. That's right. And so the order forms will be, um, they're out there already. Good. Thank you. So the order forms are out there for the poinsettias. Uh, believe it or not, we have to order those, uh, you know, several weeks at, um, before our kind of Christmas season. So, so those are due, I think, November 27th, uh, information in your bulletin about that. So if you'd like to do that and order those for Christmas, please do that right away. Good. Any other announcements? Those are all good announcements. Lots of things going on. Okay, if not, then I invite you to stand as we sing our final hymn together. <laughs> 